What is up guys? So today's video is going to be all about power valves, um, two stroke power valves primarily. So let's get into it. I'm pretty much going to share with you guys everything I know about power valves and probably everything you'll ever need to know about them. I'm going to start off pretty basic for you guys and just show you a little bit of the function of the power valve and what it looks like and then work our way up to some more advanced topics. Okay guys, here's the cylinder off the bike I'm building. Uh, we're looking here in the exhaust port. That is where the power valve is located. Basically what the power valve is, it is attached to this linkage here and there's little flaps that'll come down. Okay guys, so another view here from inside the cylinder. So these are the two exhaust ports. And when I actuate this linkage, it'll either close the power valve and shorten the exhaust port or open it and lengthen them. All right, so this is the engine that the cylinder is eventually going to go on. I've already rebuilt the whole bottom end on this, so if you guys want to check that out, I'll have it linked at the end of this video. But for now, I'm just going to put this cylinder on here. And basically, I'm not going to install it all the way, but I'm just going to take the arm and show you guys how it mounts up. So this linkage arm mounts onto this little knob here. And basically how this works is there's a governor in the bottom end. Based on engine speed, it tells the arm to go up and down, and at higher RPMs, it's going to open that exhaust valve, and at low RPMs, it's going to close it. So I went ahead and I pulled this case off of the engine so I could show you guys the gear that actually actuates our power valve arm. So this is the governor gear is what it's called, and you can see the teeth on the power valve arm mush up with the rings around this governor gear so when this inner clutch cover is on the engine the governor gear slides onto our main gear here which is uh, basically runs right off the crankshaft so every revolution of the crankshaft your uh, governor gear is going to be having revolutions too so honda specifies a certain spring pressure that when this rotates at a certain speed it'll actually define that defy the spring pressure and turn your power valve gear like your linkage arm it'll turn your linkage arm and then open or close your power valve based on the rpm okay guys so this is the kdx 220 i have the shop right now it's the only other two stroke that i'm working on right now but i have this engine apart right now because i'm getting some work done on the top end i'm having it ported out and some performance stuff done to the cylinder head um, also replacing the piston and stuff but Separate from this video, but here is the power valve linkage from this one. So you can see it's an arm, right, that comes, it's still the same, it's an arm that comes from the bottom end. But the way Kawasaki does it is a little bit different than Honda. They run a piece with teeth on it and it'll connect onto another uh, gear and it's just rotating that gear back and forth. I already showed you guys this in the cylinder, but now I'm just going to show you again on the whiteboard here. But we have our exhaust port here, our transfer port or intake port here, which intakes our fuel and air. And now I added the power valve on here. And I know you guys are now getting that the power valve opens and closes to shorten and lengthen the uh, exhaust port length. But you guys are probably still wondering, like, why would the power valve do that? What's the point of shortening and lengthening the exhaust port length? The whole reason a power valve does this is to give you a broader RPM range. So at a low RPM, you're going to want a small exhaust port, and then at a higher RPM, you're going to want a bigger exhaust port. And this will just allow you to have power across all of your RPM ranges. So I went ahead and I drew a dyno graph for you guys to kind of show you the difference between a power valve bike and a non-power valve bike in terms of performance. So we have our power output, our RPMs down here. And then, so this bike in the black is going to be without power valve, and it comes from the manufacturer with a top end focus to it. So it's got a pretty big exhaust port from the manufacturer. And then this blue one here kind of looks like purple as a bottom end focus. So it's got a smaller exhaust port from the manufacturer and is designed to have a kick off the bottom, but will not sustain that power very long. So you can see there's a big difference between the other bikes. So you can see here the green bike competes with the blue bike off the bottom end and then has a big difference over the black bike. And then on the top end, it's pretty equal with the black bike. But in terms of overall ac acceleration, it totally dominates the competition in terms of average power output and would definitely win a race between these three bikes. This is kind of what you would experience if you rode a bike from the 1970s or if you ever had a 
like a little KTM 65 as a kid. I remember I had one and it was pretty quiet until I hit that power band and then man that thing would fly. So you could definitely tell it did not have a power valve in it and did not have an equal dispersion of power. All of the major manufacturers are going to have different ways of implementing power valve technology into their bikes. As I showed you earlier, on the CR125, Honda has uh, that linkage arm, and then on their 250s, they use a servo motor, and they call them an RC valve on both. So Yamaha uses a power valve linkage arm similar to Honda, and they were actually the inventor of the power valve system. So the Kawasaki power valve system is called KIPS, Kawasaki Integrated Power Valve System is what it stands for. And I showed you guys the linkage arm earlier, and basically that arm goes up and attaches to two gears, which in turn will rotate open your power valve system. And like Honda, Suzuki also uses a governor in the bottom end to actuate their power valve system. And all in all, these manufacturers like to do it a little bit differently, but the function of what they're doing and the overall results are going to be very similar. Alright, so I grabbed a cylinder head off an RMZ450 I have in the shop right now. And I'm just going to compare these two to show you what the equivalent of a power valve system on a four-stroke would be. Now, four-strokes will use variable valve timing to achieve a broader power band as two strokes will use the power valve system but it's both doing the same thing so it's just changing the duration that the ports are open or the valves are open so variable valve timing will increase the time a four stroke valve is open and a two stroke the exhaust valve will be open longer when the pistons traveling by it. but as far as I know there's no dirt bikes that I use variable valve timing yet so it's not really something you guys need to learn about for dirt bikes, but I definitely am going to be doing a top-end engine series on this four-stroke to teach you everything about four-stroke engines and their valves, kind of like I have on this two-stroke engine here. Okay, guys, the last question I'm going to answer in this video is if power valves need to be serviced at all um, or maintenance needs to happen with them. So basically, yes, you do need to service your power valves at some point in the life of them. The manufacturer recommends every 8 to 15 hours usually. I think that's a little bit excessive. I think you can get away with about 20, but you do not want this thing getting stuck if you're racing the bike at all because it will definitely damage your power range if you have it stuck down you will not have no top end like we talked about earlier if it's stuck open you'll have no bottom end power so you'll want to get it serviced and in the next video of this engine build series on the CR125 build I will be showing you guys how to clean out your power valves alright guys I appreciate it if you made it to the end of the video I know it was a lot of information but I hope it wasn't enough to bore you guys um, if you guys are interested in this kind of stuff and want to see more go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me and have a good one I'll see you next time